came in such a tiny box, I was like, oh my gosh, I've been catfished for like a lot of money. Welcome back. My name is Sarah from Teachers Happy and today I'm going to be talking all things wedding related. If you haven't checked out our wedding video um, yet, maybe go and do that first so you have a bit of context. Um, I will be inserting lots and lots of clips but I'm just going to put in a little thing right here and you can go and watch that and then come back and watch the process. I'm just going to chuck in a very quick disclaimer before I begin that obviously the reason why you have a wedding is to be married and that's like the end goal. So please, I would really love if people just kind of took everything I said with a grain of salt um, that this is kind of the way that I wanted my wedding. If you want a totally different vibe for a wedding or you just want to get those papers signed um, so you can be married and, you know, be together, <laughs> then that's totally fine. The first thing that I wanted to say was there are three things that determine the factors of your wedding. Okay. These are the first things you want to knock out with your partner. Um, before you get married, um, you want to make sure number one, number one, your timeline. Okay. If you want to get married in six months, nine months, a year, two years, five years, three months, whatever your timeline is, you need to just like discuss that early. Um, I know lots of people are going to come up to you and be like, when's the date? And you're going to be freaking out because you just got engaged. But if you want to start the process, the first thing I would suggest doing is figuring out a timeline of where and about you want to get married because that will determine everything else. So make sure that you do that. The second thing that you need to do um, is determine your budget. Ugh. Ugh. I'm not going to discuss money because that's not like my vibe. I don't like feel comfortable discussing money online. Um, I'm a teacher. Let's just say I'm not rolling in the cash. Um, but yeah, it, your budget really determines everything. If you're, you know, your family's going to put in and that's wonderful. If you're going to pay for it all yourself, if you want to have like this big, huge wedding or you want to have a small intimate wedding, your budget will determine, um, all of that. The third thing super important is the amount of people that you feel like you're going to have at your wedding as well. If you want like a big wedding, a small wedding, um, if you're going to have like a hundred people, if you're going to have 50 people, if you're going to have 10 people, if you're going to have like 350 people, those three factors really determine everything you do going forward. So I would knock them out with your partner. Make sure you discuss everything because it is their day too. As much as um, I feel like the bride, the bride, the bride, um, make sure you are including them in the process because uh, like it's, it's your day as much as I'm like, it's my day, it's your day. Once you've got those three things nailed, I feel like you can start the planning process. The first thing that we did, which makes kind of in my mind the most sense and maybe I'm wrong but um, was book our venue so because we had our at the time that we wanted to get married we had um, the amount of people that we wanted there and our budget we were able to look at venues within that because it's kind of useless in my mind going to a venue that number one you can't afford number two is really far away or like hard to get to is not going to fit your capacity of people um, so you kind of try and narrow them down by those three factors and that way you can move forward really easily. Look, the first venue I went to was the one. I, I kind of already knew that. I'd, I worked in weddings for a really long time um, before I got married. I, I don't know if you guys know that. I worked at, like I was in like kind of the wedding scene. Um, I was a musician for weddings um, and I also ran like a photo booth. I know, so random. Um, so I was kind of, I knew wedding venues, I knew wedding vendors that so kind of gave me a bit of like, not an inside scoop, but like a little bit, I knew inside like how weddings worked and stuff. So I kind of already knew all the things that I wanted even before I got engaged because I'm just a wedding gal. Some people aren't wedding gals and that's okay. Um, you just might not be into it, but I'm really obsessed with weddings. I love watching them. I love Pinteresting. I love binging them on YouTube. Um, I love every part of it. So remember that as I'm talking that I'm wedding obsessed and I've also worked in the wedding industry. So I kind of get a bit of a vibe of how it all works. So the first thing I did was go to a wedding venue and it was the wedding venue we ended up choosing, which was Kantara House. Um, I'll have links and stuff below of everything and I'll obviously insert some clips of what everything looks like. Um, I went in there kind of already knowing that that's where I wanted to get married. Um, I think Bryce thought we were going to go look at like all these different places, but in my mind, I'm like, this is the one. Um, 
and I walked in and I was just such an idiot. I just started crying. I was just like, this is like always what I pictured as a little girl. Um, and I was just like, oh, this is the one. Like, it's like, okay, like settle down. You need to have a little bit more of like a poker face so they don't like sneakily like up the price. It's like when you go into um, like an open house for when you're buying a house, like you don't want to go in and be like, oh my God, it's the one. Like I'll pay anything. You want to go in like settled poker face. I did not do that. I'm not that kind of person. I can't lie. I can't show expression. <laughs> like I can't fake expression. Um, so I went in and I cried. And that's how I kind of knew it was the one. Bryce also really liked the place, so it was kind of a no-brainer for both of us. Everything was super um, accessible for our family. It was close by. Um, it held the capacity that we needed. It was within the budget that we wanted. Um, and it was all in one venue, which I find really cool because you don't have to then travel. Um, if you don't know, my brother-in-law is actually in a wheelchair, so it would be really hard for us to have a venue that was kind of all over the place, like to then get him in and out of the car. Um, I have elderly grandparents that I wanted to attend. So all those kind of, like I said, in the first like three things, your guest list will determine the factors around your wedding. Um, obviously because he was in the bridal party, we wanted to make it as easy as possible, um, for everyone just to be chill, to be calm, to be able to be super accessible. So our venue had the ceremony, the cocktail hour and the reception all in one place. We did all the photos in one place so we didn't have to drive, like get in the car and drive and all that kind of thing. Just And my dress, it was a cupcake. It was a meringue, like getting in and out of the car. Ugh, stressful, don't like that. But anyway, I like that the venue had all three in one. Um, it was super easy because people could just like literally walk to the next thing. They didn't have to worry about driving or filling in time which I feel like is a big factor if you've got you've got to travel like an hour to the next place or um, that will all determine your kind of like schedule for the day. So yeah, so that was made it really easy for us. I love that it was a mix of indoor and out because rain, you can't help the weather. Like the weather is such a big factor and I am one of those control freaky kind of people. If you know me, I'm a teacher. I like things organized. I like things a certain way. And the weather was something I just didn't want to have to worry about on the day. If it rained, knowing my luck, it will rain. It rained that we visited the venue three times. It rained every single time we were there. And I was just like, this is what's going to happen on the day and look how beautiful it is. So that's fine. Um, so we got him married inside a chapel and then the next, like the cocktail hour was like half, like under a sail. So it was like half inside, half out. We had the most beautiful weather on the day, so we were so lucky, but it was nice to have that stress relief that if it rained, it wasn't going to be a completely different vision. I always worry about that, like if you don't have like a hand in what things look like, that when you actually get to the venue, you're going to be like, this doesn't look anything like what I wanted, which is a very me thing. It might not be for everyone, but a very me thing. Um, and then the reception was actually in an indoor like venue. And upstairs is where you could get ready. So I love my little control freakiness. Came down, checked that everything was like being set out the way that I liked. I loved that, that I could just like walk down and check that throughout the day and not have like a stress of send me photos of what it looked like. Like I could literally just walk downstairs. So that's all the things I really loved about my venue. I did love that I got ready on the premises so I then didn't have to get in my big meringue dress in the car um, and, and travel because I feel like travel adds an element of stress and I wanted the day to be really like calm, chill, because I'm not like the most chill person in the world. I wanted to just take away that element of travel for the entire wedding that I was just there, ready to go, ready to rock. It was like 15 minutes from where my parents were living. So it was super easy to like get there in the morning. Anyway, so moving on from the venue, we locked in that. Um, we did a few different visits there at, throughout the, the timeline. We actually were engaged for about 18, well, roughly like 18 months. Um, so we're getting engaged in October 2017 and we got married in April 2019. So I think, I don't know, calculate that, about 18 months. So I found like that was a really good time frame because we were able to lock in the first venue that we went to and like my first pick. Because if you, you know, get married within like three months or six months and stuff, your first pick might not be available because someone might have already booked it. So that's what I'm saying about that number one, like that timeline is so important if you want like the wedding that you your first picks for all of your wedding. And obviously your budget will determine your picks as well. Um, so yeah, locked in that. 
did a few venue runs, did a taste testing there. All right, so Bryce and I have just well, arrived at our wedding venue to do a tasting of our menu and selecting our menu tonight. So we're so excited. Um, I'm very hungry too. It was beautiful, we loved it. Love the venue, links down below. The next thing that I locked in <laughs> was actually my dress. I bought my dress like two weeks after getting engaged. That night I was literally like Googling it going, this is the one that I want. Um, you do not need to do that. 18 months is plenty of time to get a dress together. Some, I know if you get it like designed or, or made and stuff, you might need to do it like at least like six months out, if not longer. Um, but yeah, you can get a dress um, definitely within 18 months. I ordered mine online. Ugh, so stressful. Maybe don't order yours online because I was worried when it came, it came in such a tiny box. And you know my dress is big, it's puffy, it's a meringue. Um, it came in such a tiny box. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been catfished for like a lot of money. Um, pulled it out. It was perfect. It was my size. It, it was wonderful. Um, I did go to a bridal shop and try on that exact dress, but they didn't have it and it wasn't going to come in for a really long time. And I didn't really want to travel back and forth to, um, like this bridal shop was like two hours away from my house. I didn't really want to travel there for fittings and like have to worry about that, that travel stress. So I bought it from, I'm pretty sure it was like a shop in like Dallas or something, um, in America. I don't have, like I tried looking for it the other day and I can't find it anywhere. So don't ask me what it is, but I know that the brand is Hayley Page. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with Hayley Page. If you've watched, um, Say Yes to the Dress, if you've watched Just Got Page, any of those shows, that's all, like her dresses are always featured. Um, she has the most beautiful designs super girly, super elegant, super blingy if you're into that as well. Um, they're definitely not like that boho vibe. They're definitely more like princessy um, classic dresses. And I knew I wanted one for, from her for ages and I'd seen this dress all over Pinterest. Like my whole Pinterest board was full of it. And I got really grumpy at Bryce because he went and looked on my Pinterest board for... Um, something else and he's like oh like you had so much wedding stuff i'm like oh my gosh my wedding dress and they're like please don't see it um but thankfully i don't think well if he did he lied and said he didn't see it but it's a uh, like i want to say like silk organza or something i don't know it was like mesh and it was beautiful ruched and had like so many layers it was quite not like super heavy i definitely tried on heavier dresses at the bridal shop um, but it had these like tiny, tiny straps and actually one of them popped off at the wedding. I was horrified. I was like, oh no, it's okay. I fixed it, but it popped off at the wedding and I was like, dang, but there was a lot of pressure on those tiny, tiny straps. Um, it also had like a, it wasn't like sequins. It was like, I don't know, like little sparkles all throughout the dress, all throughout the layers of shawl. And it was beautiful and I'm obsessed with it and I love it. And I've got it sitting at home and I don't know what to do with it because I don't want to sell it. And um, I want to keep it forever, but it's so large. It's like, where do you keep it? It's the first dress that I tried on at that bridal store. It's a dress that I knew I wanted the whole time. I went to the bridal store and to be honest, I had a really bad experience at the bridal store. Um, the girl like just threw me into all these dresses that I knew like in my heart, I would never wear something like that. She's like, go out of your comfort zone. I'm like, I wanted my dress to reflect my personality and kind of like my dress style, but amped up, if that makes sense. And I kind of feel like that's the way that you should approach dress buying. Um, obviously you want things that like suit your body type, um, and your personality but she kept kind of trying to put me in like these like really like boho dresses or these like super blingy dresses and I knew that just wasn't my vibe and I think it's really important to stick to your guns and know what you love and I, I know it's hard like obviously you want to try different things but you want to pick something that you're going to be comfortable in and you're going to feel beautiful in um, please don't just go with the trendy option and you end up having the same dresses like every single other person you pick what is right for you my dress was a meringue it was a bubble it was a pastry i know that and that was something that i loved but please don't feel like you have to then go and get a dress that's super super bridal because you feel like your mother-in-law would like that. You need to get something that you feel good in. If you're having a beach wedding, get a boho dress. If you're having a beach wedding and you want to wear a princess dress, do it. Who cares? It is your wedding. It is your time to um, be yourself and just be comfortable and um, feel really good about yourself. So make sure you don't pick something that is just trendy or that you feel like is cool. And that's because I just feel like that's such a waste.
I don't know, you might not agree with me. So that's kind of how I approach dress shopping. I did buy a veil as well. I actually got it made. It was only very cheap. Don't, I'm not like, oh, custom. It was like a cheap veil. Um, and it went over like my face. I didn't know that I wanted that because I tried one on into the store and it was super like, it wasn't very sheer and I felt like I looked like Voldemort. Like it was like, who's under there? Is it Sarah? Is it someone else? But I bought one that was like super duper sheer, which I kind of liked and then I could flick it over. Um, it's the one time in your life you can wear a veil. So if you want to wear a veil, go and wear a veil. If you don't want to wear a veil, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I do, I do love a veil and I thought that was very my vibe. It's literally the one time where you can, so go for it. I also wore a crown because I'm that kind of person. You might look at that and be like, that is so over the top, but you know what? I don't care. It was my day. Whatever. I had a crown by Derby and Power. It's only like a little, a little one. I really wanted like a big, like Victoria Novak one, but they're like $800 plus and I can't afford that. And also it might be, might've been a bit much with like the big crown, the big veil, the big hair, the big dress, the like hectic makeup. Um, the spray tan, it might have been like a little bit too much. So yeah, I got like a smaller crown, which I thought looked beautiful because when I had my veil over the front of it, it just like sat really nicely. A crown's probably a bit much for some people. They're like, why did you wear a tiara to your wedding? It's like, because it's my day and I can. It's the one time where you can do that. Why not? Just go for it. So working my way down. So I know how I've just gone on to like a rant about my dress. Shoes. I actually had the same shoes as my bridesmaids um because i bought them for them and then i was like oh i actually want these for myself too they were just like a cute little shoe from seed they had like bows on them um they weren't the most comfortable shoe but they weren't the most uncomfortable shoe either i was just maybe getting a block heel or like a wedge or something for your wedding or flat shoes <laughs> like i wear sneakers literally every day so like i do wear the heels and stuff to perform if I'm singing and stuff and I have worn heels for long periods of time before, but in your wedding, oh, my feet were like throbbing by the end of the day because I had that heavy dress on. I was hot. My feet were hot. They were large. I've got large feet as it is. It was just like not a good time. They were beautiful shoes, but I would suggest maybe going like a block heel or something at your wedding because um, I literally had to get someone to take off my shoes for me because my dress was so large. I couldn't like reach down and get my own shoes. My husband Bryce bought me a pair of earrings to wear on the day. But other than that, I don't think I had like anything else like accessory wise on. I think that was it. Um, moving on to the next thing that I is related, not like in the timeline. I, I don't know how I'm organizing this. Um, my bridesmaid dresses were probably the hardest thing of my life. I just, they were just too much uh, to handle. Um, yeah, you'll see all inserts. We tried on some shoes and belts and ties and things, but we couldn't really pick any because they kind of are going to have to work around the bridesmaid dresses. So until we can buy those, um, we'll just have to wait. But I just don't like any bridesmaid dresses at the moment. Like they're all really like bright colors or like super floral and just kind of hard to match with really like neutral. I'm trying to go for like more of a neutral theme. Um, so we'll just have to wait until something really nice comes in. Maybe summer, something nicer will come in. I don't know. Or I might just be being very fussy and that's okay. Because <laughs> um, I just want everyone to feel like super comfortable in their dress. I don't want to be, you know, telling people to wear something just because I'm stressing that it's like six months out. Obviously, that's a long time. We can wait for something else and new to come in that everyone likes and feels good in. And it's comfortable to dance in. And the bridesmaid dresses, as we know, has been a bit of a schmozzle, a bust. There's just nothing nice. I just don't like anything. So... I haven't got any of those, but it's all happening. It's about four months away now. So today we're going to the city because I want to get bridesmaid dresses today because I'm just so over like not having them because it kind of impacts other decisions like your color scheme. Probably purchased like three dresses before I found the right one. I purchased some online and I got the girls to try them on and they were just a bad time. I felt like I was catfished by one of the dresses because it was just so different to what it looked like online. And eventually about like six weeks or something before the wedding, we finally got dresses. <laughs> okay, I can't show you what's in this package, but we finally have flipping bridesmaid dresses. Yes, and these ones, these are mwah, beautiful. The ones, done, gone. Another thing ticked off. The tyranny is over. I'm just so happy. Mm, relax. Now I can do all the other like color stuff because we finally have a color scheme. 
they were beautiful they were perfect they were a brand called Alice McCall um, just like super girly super just like the vibe that I was after without even knowing I just I had no vision of the the bridesmaid dresses and I think that was what was tricky they were floral and they um, which I know is a bit random because obviously like there was a very like you're holding flowers there's gonna be floral decoration there might be a bit much but there was such a subtle hint of floral that I think it worked uh, they were probably the trickiest thing to find and especially like within budget within everyone's like body type if people feel comfortable I obviously wanted my bridesmaids to feel like super duper comfortable I was originally just gonna have them in something all different um, and just like let them pick their own one with the color scheme but yeah we just no one could find one that they particularly like so we kind of all decided on this particular dress which I love so I'm glad that we went with it makeup and hair um, I actually my cousin did my hair who's my normal hairdresser anyway her name's hair by cayenne you can check her out below and my makeup was from my beautiful friend Jen Cox. She has her own YouTube channel. You should go and check her out as well. She does awesome makeup tutorials and vlogs and all sorts of stuff. And she did my makeup. You should really have a hair trial and a makeup trial if you have time, if you have the money to do it. I did have a hair trial. I had a, a bit of a practice because if you didn't notice, I had hair extensions in. This is my hair and it wasn't much longer than this actually, like naturally on the day. I had hair extensions in. They were just a sitting pretty halo extension and I got them cut and colored to match my natural hair which was super duper blonde at the time. Like I know it's pretty blonde right now, but it was like white blonde at the time, which I did love because I was like, ah, blonde princess. Oh, it was a bit much. So yeah, I had those as like a bit of an extra. I just like, I really love big hair. It's like, it's a country music thing. If you're in, you get it. It's, I, we all love big hair. Dolly Parton is our idol. Yeah, I wanted really big, super thick hair. So I had the, the halo extensions just to kind of add a bit of volume to my hair. I knew I didn't want an updo. I knew I just wanted to have my hair out and similar to how I normally wear it, which is like out and, and curly, wavy. It was super duper curly. I kind of wish I'd just like threw my hands through it a little bit more for the ceremony. It looked perfect at like the reception is how I wanted it to look. And obviously it had to like be nice and tight to like keep hold. But yeah, I just wish I'd kind of brushed it out a little bit more because like the majority of the photos were taken at the ceremony and then in the bridal shoot. And yeah, it was just like super curly. And I think I just like in my brain, I would have liked it a little bit more wavy, but that's no reflection on my beautiful hair or makeup people. It's just like looking back at photos, how I wish that I had like, done that. Hey guys, this is editing Sarah coming at you after listening to myself talk for like six plus hours. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. So I've broken it up into part one, which is what you watch today. And then part two is going to be more based on like DIY, decor, flowers, that kind of vibe. And then potentially a part three, um, which I'll obviously like have in the description bar below when it is up. But if you want to be notified every time that I upload, make sure you subscribe and tap the notification bell so you can be up to date with all the wedding related content or the teaching related content and for watching this one. Thank you kindly.